What's going on everybody, Peyton Smith here and today I'm actually working on a client project. Um, in this scenario, my client who is Idaho Lawn Pros based out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, they wanted a custom CMS blog solution. Um, this is something that we need so we can start implementing more articles for SEO purposes and what they actually sent me is this website called frame.io and you're going to notice that they have this blog set up with these thumbnails kind of this cool design hover effects and then these are taking you into the specific blog post so we're going to be recreating this i'm going to show you step by step how i did this recreation setting up our thumbnails all of our hover effects and then how i was able to pull all of these fields from cms collections and how this is structured so that you can build this pass it on to your clients and they're going to be able to utilize these powerful webflow cms features to manage a blog, add new blog articles every single week or month, and it's gonna be no extra work for you. And so I'm gonna show you start to finish how we set this up, how we created it, how we designed it. So stay tuned, we're showing you everything starting right now. All right, so here we are on my client's website, and the first thing that you guys are going to notice, and I wanna get ahead of this, because I know some of you will probably recognize this, but I did use a Webflow template for this site. Um, and actually, I, I really enjoy using the templates because on a lot of projects that uh, maybe your client doesn't necessarily have an opinion on the design or maybe they found a template that, that they really like the look of it. Templates are a great way to kind of lunge the project forward and, and just get uh, kind of a basic setup of a site down so then you can work on customizing and changing colors and, and different things. And so um, this is a template and with this template came a very standard um, CMS blog setup. And so over here in the blog page, you'll notice that I've actually gone in and I've erased any CMS connections because I want to start completely from scratch. And again, we're going to be referencing um, this website frame.io because I really enjoyed the way that their blog section was set up. And so what we're going to be doing is using this as um, some inspiration. And the first thing that we're going to need to do to create a blog is we're actually going to need to click over here and create a CMS collection. Now, we've got a couple of other ones here, but I'm actually going to create a new collection and Webflow gives us these pre-built um, CMS templates. And so up here at the top, I'm going to click blog post and you're going to see that that is automatically going to fill in um, these custom fields like post body, post summary, main image, thumbnail, whether or not this article is featured, which is a really nice um, way to feature articles on the homepage of your site. And then it also comes with color. Now, as I reference this frame.io, um, there are a couple other things that they have. They have um, the read time, and then they also have the category type. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a new field down here, and I'm just gonna go and do, well, I think probably the best thing to do is going to be to create just a plain text field and do read time and we're going to do this in minutes. And so in the help text, I'm just going to put a sample or maybe an example rather. And then we are going to put an example, um, just the number, maybe two minutes just like this and so that's how they're going to use this there are a number of different ways we could do this we could actually do a drop down with numbers we could do a bunch of different things so let's just let's just try this for now up here i do have another um collection that's named the same so just for the sake of this let's just call these blog post and we are going to create this collection now by doing this um, it's going to create this collection over here titled blog post and it's actually going to give us the option to create some dummy items, which I always like to do because it makes it way easier to see what our CMS is going to look like on our site without having to go in and start plugging in our own articles. So now that we've created our dummy blog post, you're going to see that as you click on these, um, it has filled out all of the different fields with just some placeholder um, text and content. And so now that we've got that created, over here in our blog, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is click over here on our add button, and we're gonna scroll down to collection list. And we can actually drag and drop this right over here. And the first thing it's gonna do is give us the option to collect or to select a collection item or a different CMS collection. And so right here, we've got our blog post, which we just created. We're gonna click that. Your layout, you can click um, three across because if you'll remember, that is what the frame.io blog does is there's three across. 
And the first thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to drag a div block over and into this container. Now what this is going to do is um, within these CMS items, when I add it to one, it's going to add it to every single item. And so once I build this out once, the style or the design is going to be the same for every individual thumbnail for each blog post, okay? So again, to reference back, we've got a picture here, and then we've got another, looks like div block, right over here that is slightly to the left. And so the first thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to give this div block a height of, maybe let's try 500 pixels. It's gonna be a little too tall, so let's go down to about 400 pixels. And just like this, we have our main box. Now the next thing that I'm actually gonna do is drag over a div block within our other div block, and this is going to be titled thumbnail. And just to make sure that I do this properly, let's just call this our, our main thumb div. This is the main one. And so what I'm going to do now in this smaller thumbnail is I am going to come over here and get the background image from my CMS items. And I'm going to make this the thumbnail image. Now you can see that that's going to automatically fill the background image. But what I'm gonna to wanna to do now is come over here to my image and gradient background settings. And if I click add this, it's actually going to give me the ability to make adjustments to this background image that's being pulled from the CMS item. So if I select cover, it is actually going to um, pull that and cover the entire div with the image. Now with that done on my thumbnail, what I'm gonna do is do a height of, well, let's look back at our frame.io. Looks like it has a height of about 50%. So maybe let's just do 250 pixels. And so just like that, well, actually let's go a little bit smaller, 200 pixels. And that is going to pull the image there. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to round the corners. And so we'll scroll down here to our radius and let's just maybe make a radius of, let's start with 20 um, pixels to start. And so just like that, we have our thumbnail image. And I actually wanna make this a little bit bigger. I think it needs to be slightly larger. So let's go 220, eh, 225. Great, and so the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create this smaller box where we have our title, our category, our um, time on the read, and then also looks like our publish date, okay? And so what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to bring in an additional div block, and we're going to make the background of this white just so we can see it as we're playing with it. Let's do a white background. And you can see that it slightly comes up and over the image. And so right off the bat, I'm actually going to um, come up here and I'm going to make the position relative. And then what I can do is I can pull this up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this div block be 80% of the width. And then on my height, I'm gonna go ahead and Actually, maybe just give this a little bit of padding and then we'll see where we want the size to be. And I've actually got the opacity up on this white, and so I'm gonna make this completely white. And so just like that, we are starting to build out this content div, okay? So the next thing that I'm gonna do, and as we continue forward to add the title and things into this, we're gonna see more how the, the shape and the size plays out. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is just drag in a header and from this header, I'm actually gonna make this an H3, and then I am going to pull the name of my blog post right in here, okay? And so you can see how that's starting to take shape. I can already tell that I'm going to need to put some shadow around this box, and I'm going to need to give it a little bit of spacing, a little bit of padding, excuse me. So we'll give this maybe 15, 14 pixels of padding, and then I'm going to come down here and give this a box shadow. And I like my box shadows to be opaque, and so they're not too obvious. And then I'm going to create a little bit more blur here. And then we're gonna to need to round the corners. And you'll notice that all the corners are rounded except for this top left one. And so we're going to come in here to the corners and we're going to give 20 pixels to all the corners except for the top left. And just like that, this is starting to come together, okay? So if we look over here, the next thing that we have is 
we've got our workflow and then our 17 minute read and you'll notice that this is going to have to be in its own div block okay and so what I'm going to do is actually drag a div into here and I'm going to also drag a text block into here and the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab a category now you're going to notice that there actually isn't the ability to pull a category and that is because we haven't created the CMS right we haven't created a category within our CMS and so if you look over here um, there's no category section so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new CMS collection and I'm going to come over here and click categories and you'll notice that it automatically fills in description icon and color uh, and then obviously the name and the slug or the the link so I'm going to create this collection and then it's going to ask again to create some dummy items so I'm going to add five of these dummy items so we can have some categories to play with. All right, so now that we've got our categories created, um, what I wanna do is just maybe give a couple of these some, some more recognizable names. So let's do lawn care. The next one we're gonna go ahead and do, um, let's just say spring cleaning. Great, so we'll fill out the rest of these categories as we come to them. Um, but now that I've got those categories, what I'm going to need to do is go back into my blog post and tell this collection that I want to reference my categories. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new field and I'm going to scroll down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this reference right here and I'm going to type in category and category of the help text as well. And then right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to select the collection categories, and this is what I'm going to reference, okay? So as I save this field, save the collection, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into our blog post and show you what this has done for us. So as I dive in, oh, it's saving still. So as I dive into our blog post now, you'll notice down here at the very bottom, now we have a drop down that says category, and I can actually select from the categories that I just created. So let's select lawn care for starters. We're going to go ahead and save that. And now going back to our website, you're going to notice that when I pull from our CMS, it is giving me the ability to select category right here. And we're going to pull from the category name. And just like that, it's pulling lawn care. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to need to do is work on my 17 minute read. Okay. And so what we're going to do for this is I'm actually going to copy and paste this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make this horizontal. And so coming up here in the display, we're going to make this horizontal. And I actually am going to pull an additional div block in here and move this. And the next thing I want to do is make sure that I'm pulling my read time in minutes. Okay. And you'll notice that this is actually pulling some crazy text because I forgot to customize this and so let's go five great actually what was the first one five great web design resources and so I'm gonna come in here and if you remember right down in here in read time minutes um, the example was two minutes I'm gonna go ahead and put this one is 14 minutes so as I save that you're gonna see it's gonna update that here and the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I want it to say the word read and so I'm actually going to copy and paste this text block over. And again, within this div block, I also want this to be horizontal. And then with this text block, I actually don't want this polling from my CMS because I just want this to say the word read. Okay. And obviously we want this to be all caps. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to create a little spacing between these. And so let's see what 10 pixels, no, maybe let's go five pixels, see what that will do. And then my div block, I want probably 20 on this side. And just like that, we're starting to get this structure of these horizontal. Um, we've got the category and then we've got the read time, 14 minute read, just like that. So the next thing that we're going to need is the time that this article was published. And so I love just to keep working with these text blocks. I'll copy and paste this text block below. And what I can do is click on that text block, come over here and I can get the text from my blog post. And what I'm going to do is actually scroll down and you can see that this is going to say published on. Now, because these aren't published, when I click this, it's actually not going to show anything, okay? 
And so what I'm going to do for the sake of this example is I'm going to put created on and that's going to show um, just this example right here. So what you're going to want to do is once you publish this, you're going to want to switch this back to published on um, just to make sure that that's more accurate. But you can tell right there it's polling in the time that this was published. Now what I want to do is create a little bit more of a margin below my title. And now you can tell here that we're having um, some issues with our spacing between elements. And so what I'm going to do is come to this main div thumb and you'll notice that this is actually floating outside of that. So I think it's safe probably just to give this a height of 400 and let's say 475. And then we're probably going to want to give a little padding as well. Great. And so just like that, we have our setup. And now again, some of these text blocks are going to look funny because I haven't plugged in the correct fields for my CMS. And so just looking at this first one, you're going to be able to see what this is looking like. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want to do is you'll notice we've got this little colored bar over here on this side. Now, the issue with the way we've got this set up is if I create a yellow bar on the side of this div block, obviously it is going to look kind of funny because it's not going to be all the way to the edge of this bigger div block. And so what I am going to do is I'm actually going to come in here to our div block and I'm going to remove the padding on the side. So bring everything to the edge. And then what I'm going to do is bring in an additional div block and I'm going to pull in my header and I'm going to pull in the the publish date within this and then I can give myself some padding on the inside. Let's give ourselves 20 pixels padding. The same with this div block up here, we're going to give ourselves 20 pixels of padding. Now by doing this, now when I give myself this left colored border, you're going to notice that that is going to go clear to the edge without ruining any of my other padding or spacing. Okay. And so just like that, we've got this in this div block. I actually want to give this a minimum height of, let's say 25 pixels. And let's see how that looks. Now let's go a little bit bigger. Let's say 40 pixels. I want to center this. And that is just going to ensure that we have a big enough line right here. And then by doing this, I'm actually going to relieve some of this vertical padding. And just like that, we have our blog starting to look like our frame.io blog setup, okay? And so the next thing that we're going to need to do is dive into our individual blog post pages to dictate how the blog is going to look. But before I do that, before I forget, I want to finish up this um, thumbnail section by making sure that I connect these links or these thumbnails to the individual blog article. So what I'm going to do is come to the main thumb div and I'm actually going to right click on this and I'm going to convert this to a link block. Okay. Now by doing this, I can then come over here to my settings and right here under link settings, I'm going to click the collection page and then I can make sure that this goes to the current blog post or the um, specific page for each blog post. Now you'll notice that when I switch this to a link block, turned everything blue and it gave everything underlined. So what I'm going to go back here is uh, I'm going to go back here and confirm my style settings by turning this to black. And I want to make sure that we don't have any text decorations or any underlines. And then as a final thing, what I want to do is just give this a little bit of a hover style. You'll notice in frame to I when I hover, this turns blue. So for this text, when I hover this, I think I want this to turn kind of our darker green, just like that. And I also am going to remove this hover and then I'm going to give this a transition. And I always have a hard time finding these. So typography, we're going to go to font color and we're going to give this a little bit of a transition. So you can see that as they hover these, it changes colors. And so now when we go into our preview, as I hover, this is going to change colors just like it did on our frame to IO site. And as I click these, it's actually going to take me in to the specific pages for our specific blog post. And so now what we're going to need to do is construct these blog post pages to make sure that very similar to frame.io, when I click on this, it's going to open up this blog page. Okay. And so 
the first thing that we're going to need to do on our Webflow site is I'm going to want to pull from our symbols. I'm going to pull in our navigation. And I also am going to pull in our footer down here at the bottom. And then between those, I'm actually going to want to pull in a section. And one thing I always like to do with these sections, just to make sure we give ourselves space to work, is I like to put a minimum height of 100 of the viewport height. And again, you'll notice that that's just giving us a little bit of space to work with. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is give myself some padding to work beneath this header. And with that being done, I'm going to pull, actually, let's refer back to our frame.io. And you can tell they've got very similar setup going on. And so I am going to bring in a div block. And this is going to be full width. And then again, the first thing that I'm going to do is pull a background image from the main image. Scroll down here to my image and background. I'm going to set this to cover and I'm going to set this to center. And then what I'm going to want to do is give this um, the correct sizing. And so I think it's pretty safe to say that if we give this a height of 500 pixels, that is going to fill it out, but again, not take up too much space. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is set another div block down here. And this is going to be for our information section. And so very similar to what we did before, we're going to pull our header in. We're going to go ahead and make this our, our H1. We're going to pull our the name. And now that I've done this, I can get into this div block and give ourselves a little room to work by giving ourselves some padding. And then again, the next thing that we are going to need is pull in this div block here. We're going to pull in a text element. Again, we are going to pull um, this from our category name and then I'm going to copy and paste this over again and within our div block we're going to make sure that this display is set to horizontal. I'm going to pull in our second div block inside here, pull our div here and then if you'll remember we're going to want to make the second div block be the read time in minutes. Copy and paste that over, again set this inner div block to horizontal and then I want to remove this blog post CMS element from the second text block. So then I can just make this say read time. And then obviously we want to make sure that this is in all caps. We're going to give ourselves five pixels of spacing right here. Within this div block, we are going to give ourselves to start with maybe 20. And then if we refer here, it looks like these are a little bit bigger. And so I'm going to come back to this text block. I'm actually going to make this bold. I'm going to blow this up to, let's say, 25. Uh, let's go 22. I'm going to make this all caps. We're going to blow up these text blo blocks to 22 as well. And again, I'm getting a little bit lazy with my class naming just for the sake of keeping this short. Um, I actually want to give myself a little bit more spacing here. Let's bump this up to eight. Great. And on this div block, again, we're going to set the left border to our green color. And then we're going to give ourselves, looks like they've got probably, what, maybe 35 pixels of spacing there. And then again, I'm going to bring an additional div block underneath this, pull in our header. Again, within this div block, we're going to do the same. We've got uh, 35 pixels. And then with our div block, our, our main div block, we're actually going to remove this side padding. This div block, we're going to give it a minimum height of, let's say, 40 pixels. We're going to align center. And then the last thing that we need is we've actually got a um, an author section here. And we're going to, for the sake of this video, actually skip that part. But all you need to do is create an additional um, category or a diff an additional CMS item or collection that has the name of the author, the photo of the author, anything else you want. And then we would be, um, we would be pulling that from that CMS collection. But the next thing that we've got down here is our content, right? And so, oh, actually, before we do that, let's finish styling this. On our div block, we want to go ahead and give ourselves some box shadow. And again, make this a little bit more opaque. Give us some blur. And then what we're going to want to do is make this 
a width of 80%. And then we're going to want to pull this up by going position relative, and then we're going to slide this puppy up. And because the background color is transparent, we're going to want to make sure that this is white. And then I think the only other thing they have done is they have these rounded edges. Again, um, it is the bottom left, bottom right, and top right. We plug that in. And just like that, we have our section starting to look familiar here. Now, what I've done here is I've actually placed this div block right within the section, and I think what I want to go ahead and do is place both of these. Um, let's actually put them within a div block, and this is something that I like to do is rather than using a container, I set a div block and then just a max width of, let's say, 1,000 pixels. And this is just going to contain things a little bit better. Within my section, I'm going to set this to vertical, and center align. And you'll notice that when I did that, it actually made this image disappear. And that's because I want to set this width to 100%. And that is going to keep things organized when again I set this to center. I'm gonna slide this div block up. And actually this div block, I'm gonna to have to set this guy to 100% as well. And then I'm going to slide this div block up into here. And you'll notice that it put it actually on the top, so I'm going to do is bring this in here and reorganize these. And just like that is going to contain this and, and make it a little bit smaller, which is more manageable, okay? Now this is a little bit more narrow than I want it to be, so I'm actually gonna come back to this div block and let's set the max width to, let's say 1100, make it a little bit wider. Now within this div block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a rich text element right below here. And within this rich text element, I'm going to pull from the CMS blog post, the post body. And just like that, it pulls in all of the content, very similar to frame.io, it's pulling in all the content. And I notice that they have theirs a little bit more narrow. And so let's come to our rich text block. Let's set a max height of maybe 80%. And actually what I'm going to do, because I don't think it'll allow us to do that, um, I'm going to pull in an additional div block. I'm going to pull the rich text element within this, and then this div block, I'm actually just going to give it a little bit of inner padding, let's say 40 pixels, just like that. And just like that, we have all of our content pulled in. Now the last thing that I want to do before I show you how this all looks at the very end of this, um, is I want to make an adjustment to what looks like our little boxes in here that look like they are, let's see, what would you call those? Um, as I pull in a sample rich text block, those are going to be um, block quotes. Sorry, I don't know why I forgot that. And so as you highlight these, you can actually make things block quotes, and you'll notice that it puts it in this big, orange box, which definitely does not fit the style of our website. And so what you can actually do is bring in a an additional rich, rich text element that is not con connected to CMS, click within this, and in the selector you can actually go to all block quotes, and this is going to change the like worldwide classes and styles throughout your entire website with all of your block quotes. So now as I do that and scroll down, you're going to see that it has this linear gradient down here. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this, and I'm going to change the text to black. And then, let's see what this looks like italicized. Let's italicize this, and then all I'm going to do, just to kind of match our styles, I'm going to give this a left border again of, let's say, four. I'm going to pull in our, uh, our green. And just like that, we have made that style match throughout all this. All these block quotes are going to have that green line and our italicized text, okay? So uh, obviously there are a number of things I can do to get this navigation to, to stand out more. Um, but for the sake of this video, I want to just go back to the blog page right now and show you how this all works, okay? All right, so we're here on our blog page, and you're going to see again all the thumbnails that we created. 
don't worry about these ones that look a little bit janky because once you plug in the correct fields for all your blog posts, they are all going to look uniform and they're going to look awesome. But as I go to preview these, you'll notice that we've got the thumbnails here, we've got our hover effect, and as I click on this article, it is going to take us to that blog article page. Okay, now the reason that the pictures are different is one is using a thumbnail image and the other is using the main image. And so typically speaking, you're going to want to use the same image for both of those. Um, but it is taking us to the proper blog article. And you can see that we're pulling everything from our CMS, from our category to our read time to our header, and then all of our blog article content, which again at this point is a placeholder. But just like that, we have basically recreated our entire CMS blog setup and we have followed the, the design inspiration from frame.io. But just like that, you're gonna have a blog setup that can be passed to your clients, um, that they can make updates, and as they create new articles in the editor, it's going to automatically create more thumbnails on the blog page. It's going to auto-populate these individual blog article pages, and you're not gonna have to do anything else. You're not gonna have to build a new page every time you create these CMS um, blog articles, or if you're gonna do this for um, case studies or sample projects or if you want to set up CMS for one thing that my clients have been wanting recently is um, basically listing and selling different products without um, an e-commerce setup you're gonna be able to do all of that with the same CMS setup and being able to pull everything you need to as far as the fields go from the CMS um, and just like that you're gonna be able to utilize the full power of Webflow CMS to build whatever you want. So I hope that this quick sample project was inspiring. I hope that it answered some of the questions that you might have. Um, if you have any additional questions about how CMS works, I'd be happy to answer those down below. I also would be curious to know um, how often are you guys utilizing CMS in your website projects? Because um, frankly, the answer should be at least one CMS collection in every project whether that's for a blog, whether that's to update um, different team members, whatever it is, this is a really powerful feature that's gonna save you a ton of time in the long run. So let me know, know down below, how often are you using CMS? What are your biggest holdups? And I'd be happy to comment back and otherwise we will catch you guys in the next video.